Hello and welcome to MathAndSciencePower.com. My name is Joe and I'll be your host. Please remember that you can help me to help you by subscribing to my channel, commenting on the videos, and rating and sharing the videos with your friends. Also remember to visit us online for a complete listing of our videos. Okay, in this example, let's look at something slightly different. Let's say um, when we have something that's being pulled on the ground, um, in the last example, the force was directed parallel with the ground, but this time, let's look at what happens when you are pulling, say, by a rope at some angle, uh, theta. Now the mass still has mass, of course, which means that the block will still have weight, and the weight, of course, is equal to the mass of the block times gravity. So, this force, we'll still call that the force pull, but we need to know what the component of this force is that is parallel to the ground and the component of this force that is perpendicular to the ground. So in order to find the perpendicular force, we'll call this force perpendicular, we need to take the sine of the angle because here's our angle this is the opposite side so that means we need the sine times the force of the pull so the hypotenuse okay and likewise this force parallel will equal the cosine of the angle times the force of the pull so as you can see the normal force is now just is not is no longer equal and opposite to the weight because this perpendicular force is also acting in the same vertical up and down direction as the normal force so the normal force will actually equal the weight of the block minus the force perpendicular Okay, because when you pull up on this rope, you're actually making the box lighter. So the normal force becomes less than what it would have been if it was the full weight. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to know here is that the frictional force is equal to the parallel force. Okay, so that hasn't changed. So here is a new way of looking at um, these types of problems with the friction, where when you when you pull at a certain angle you're changing the normal force um, and of course the coefficient of friction is still equal to the frictional force divided by the normal force okay so let's try an example like this okay let's say this is the ground and there is a sled with someone sitting in it and the mass of this sled is 20 kilograms and someone is out here pulling the sled by a rope with a force of 100 newtons and at an angle with respect to the ground of 27 degrees okay the question is can we find the coefficient of kinetic friction. So since the sled has a mass, we know that it must have a weight, and the weight of the sled is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the weight equals 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and the weight of the sled will equal 196 newtons okay now the force of this pool can be broken down into two components the first is this one that is parallel to the ground and the second is this one which is perpendicular so I'm going to call this the force parallel the two vertical lines mean parallel and the force perpendicular the upside down T means perpendicular Okay. So the force parallel is equal to the cosine of the angle times the force of the pull. So it's the cosine of 27 degrees 
times 100 newtons. And for force parallel, I get 89.1 newtons. Okay, 89.1 newtons. Now for the force perpendicular, it's the opposite side of this angle, so now I'm going to use the sine of 27 degrees times the hypotenuse here, which is 100 newtons. And for the force perpendicular, I get 45.4 newtons. Now, since this sled has weight, we know that it must also have a normal force. And that normal force is equal to the weight of the sled minus the force perpendicular. So the normal force will equal the weight, which is 45, or no, I'm sorry, 196 newtons, minus the force perpendicular, which is 45.4 newtons. And the normal force will equal 150.6 newtons. Now there's also a frictional force here. Oh, and my normal force, of course, is 150.6 newtons. Okay, now my frictional force um, is equal to the parallel force. Okay, because the parallel force is the only force that is opposing the friction. So my frictional force also equals 89.1 newtons. Okay? So my coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to the frictional force divided by the normal force. And therefore my coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 89.1 newtons divided by the normal force which is 150.6 newtons and for the coefficient of kinetic friction I get 0 0.592 now let's take a look at one more example here let's say that this time there is a box on the ground and this box has a mass of 35 kilograms and this time you're going to push the box at a downward angle uh, with a force of 300 newtons that's the force of the pull or the push in this case and the angle with that you make with the horizon here is 40 degrees okay and we also know that the uh, the coefficient of static friction between this box and the ground happens to be 0 0.43 and the question is will the block move Okay, well 300 newtons at 40 degree angle, will that be enough to make this block move? So this might be a little bit of a challenging one. Take a moment, see if you can uh, answer this question, and we'll be right back and compare answers. Welcome back to mathandsciencepower.com. My name is Joe. Please remember that you can help me to help you by subscribing to my channel commenting on the videos, and rating and sharing the videos with your friends. Also remember to visit us online for a complete listing of our videos. Okay, so we were posed with the problem with the 35 kilogram box. We're applying 300 newtons of force at an angle of 40 degrees. And the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.43. And the question is, will the block move? So is this enough force to make this block move? So the first thing we need to do is this block has a mass, therefore it has a weight, and the weight of this block is equal to its mass times its gravity. So the weight of the block 
is equal to 35 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. The weight of the block then will be 343 newtons. Okay, now the force of the push can be broken down into two components. The first one here is parallel with the ground, so this is the force parallel, and the other one here is perpendicular to the ground. And this one is actually being directed down because we're pushing down and to the right, down and to the right, down and to the right. So this is the force perpendicular. Okay, the force perpendicular is equal to the sine of the angle times the force of the push. So the force perpendicular equals the sine of 40 degrees times 300 newtons. And therefore the perpendicular component of this force is 192.8 newtons. Um, 192.8 newtons. And now the force parallel is equal to the cosine of the angle times the force of the push. So the force parallel equals the cosine of 40 degrees, oops, dyslexic, 40 degrees times the force of the push, which is 300 newtons. So I get the force parallel equals 229.8 newtons. Okay. 229.8 newtons. Now we can see that the weight of the block and the downward component, or the force perpendicular, are both directed straight down. Uh, therefore, the force normal is going to be equal to both of these but opposite in direction. So the force normal is going to be the weight of the block plus the force perpendicular. Therefore the force normal is 343 newtons plus the force perpendicular which is 192.8 newtons. And for force normal I get 535.8 newtons. Okay, 500 35.8 newtons. Okay, and since I know the normal force and I know the coefficient of static friction, I can determine what the frictional force will be. And the frictional force is going to be opposing this motion, directed back against uh, opposing you from pushing it here. So the the coefficient of static friction is equal to the frictional force divided by the normal force. So I want to solve for frictional force, I need to multiply both sides by force normal. These will cancel, and I get the force normal times coefficient of static friction is equal to the force friction. Okay, therefore the force friction will equal, let's see, the normal force, which is 535. Oops. 0.8 newtons times the coefficient of static friction which is 0 0.43 so I get the force of friction equals 230.4 newtons the force of friction equals 230.4 newtons and the question will the block move well I can see here that the frictional force which is 230.4 newtons is greater than the force parallel here which is only 229.8 newtons uh, therefore the frictional force is greater than the force parallel and that means the block will not move in other words, the force that you're applying here is not strong enough to overcome the frictional force. On behalf of MathAndSciencePower.com, I'm Joe, and thanks for watching.